Summary of the Hate You Give by Angie Thomas Star Carter, who is 16 years old, goes to a party in Garden Heights with Kenya, a close friend with whom she shares an older half-brother, Seven. Star sees Khalil, a close childhood friend, at the party. Khalil and Star leave the party together when shots are fired, and Khalil offers to drive Star home. Khalil says that rapper Tupac Shakur said that the meaning of the term thug life is the hate you give little infants fucks everybody. Khalil gets pulled over by a police officer. Star, who is scared, tells Khalil to do whatever the officer, whose tag number she notices is 115 says. 115 tells Khalil to get out of the car, searches him, and then tells him to stay put while he goes back to his police car. 115 shoots and kills Khalil when he opens the car door to check on Star. 115 tells Star not to move and points his gun at her until other officials and an ambulance come. Star overhears her parents, Lisa and Maverick, fighting with Lisa's police brother Carlos about Khalil shooting later that night. Carlos says that he is on the same police force as 115. He supports his partner's behavior and asks why Star was in the car with a drug dealer. Star goes back to the prep school she has been going to for the past six years, Williamson, on Monday, but she doesn't tell anyone about the killing. Haley is her best friend at school, and things have been tense between them ever since Haley stopped following Star's Tumblr after she shared a picture of Emmett Till. Star sees her white boyfriend Chris outside of a classroom, but she pulls away when he tries to take her hand. Star and Lisa go to the police station that afternoon for Star to talk to officers about the killing. The police ask Star if Khalil was drinking, selling drugs, or in a gang. Lisa wants to know why it looks like Star and Khalil are being tried instead of 115. Khalil's name is on the news, along with the title, Suspected Drug Dealer. At Williamson, Star plays basketball with her friends Haley and Maya, who is Asian American. They ask Star if she knows Khalil, but she says she doesn't. Star sees a lot of people with R.I.P. Khalil t-shirts at Khalil's funeral. April Offer talks to the church and says that she works for Just Us for Justice, a group that wants cops to be held accountable. She tells the church that Khalil died without any weapons on him. King, the father of Kenya and Seven and the leader of a local gang, comes over and puts a grey scarf on Khalil's body to show that he was a king lord, or a member of King's gang. Khalil joined a gang, which makes Star very upset. That night, people all over Garden Heights protest in Khalil's name. The cops say on TV that there's no reason to arrest 115 and talk about a witness who spoke to detectives but didn't give his name. Maverick and Star go to their family's food store, where they find Devante hiding from King. Devante is a neighborhood teen and king lord. Maverick, who used to be a king lord like Devante, agrees to help Devante get out of the gang. Star finds out that Khalil's case will be heard by a grand jury. She and her parents meet with April Ofra to get ready. April tells them that 115 is said to have thought a toothbrush in Khalil's car was a gun. She tells Star to talk to Khalil to help him. Carlos agrees to take Devante in when he sees how dangerous Devante is in Garden Heights. Chris shows up at Carlos's house without being asked to, and when Maverick finds out that Star has a white boyfriend, he gets very angry. Devante later tells Star that King tried to get Khalil to become a King Lord, but Khalil said no. The bandana at the funeral was King's way of saving face. Devante says that Khalil only started selling drugs to pay back King for the money his mother owed him. Star goes to Maya's house, where she, Maya, and Haley all watch a TV conversation with the father of 115. When he says that Khalil is dangerous, Star gets angry. Haley says that she feels sorry for 115, which makes Star mad. When Haley storms out, Maya tells her that Haley has also called her racist things. She and Star form a minority alliance to hold Haley responsible for her racism. Star gives an interview to a big TV network. In it, she talks about the Khalil she knew and says that the media has been unfair to him. She also tells the police that King is the most powerful gang head in Garden Heights. Chris tells Star at the prom that he heard her voice in the interview and knows that she is the witness. 
Star tells him what it's like to live in Garden Heights. Someone shoots at and throws a rock at the Carter's house the night before Star appears in front of a grand jury. In return, Maverick asks his old gang members to guard him. The next day, Star starts telling the grand jury what she knows. After a slow start, she gets stronger when she thinks about how Khalil needs her voice. Two weeks later, Haley tells Star that killing Khalil and getting rid of another drug dealer was a good thing for the world. There is a fight between the two. Carlos has a barbecue to celebrate Seven's graduation and birthday. Aisha, Seven's mom, shows up out of the blue and says that King hates the Carters because Star told on him. Later, Devante goes missing. Star, Chris, and Seven find Devante huddled in pain at Aisha and King's house. Aisha keeps King busy while they run away. When the grand jury chooses not to charge 115, there are riots all over Garden Heights. Star, Seven, Devante, and Chris see April Ofra at the protests. She tells Star again that her voice is her most powerful tool. Star gets on top of a police car and starts a song to remember Khalil. The police use tear gas on the protesters. Star and her friends get a ride to the family shop from some of Maverick's old gang members. It is set on fire from the inside. When Maverick gets there, he opens the back door so that everyone can get out. King stops on the other side of the street and laughs. Maverick tells the cops and firefighters that King started the fire. Soon, a lot of King's friends join in to tell on him. When Maverick finds out that Chris stayed with Star all night during the riots, he has more respect for him. Devante agrees to testify against King if it will get him locked up for good. He does this to back up the claim that his voice is his best tool. Later, the Carter family move to a better area and a new house. Star wakes up in her new room and looks at the picture of Tupac on the wall. Star thinks it's time to unfuck everyone. The family goes to see how the store used to look. Mr. Lewis, whose shop was also destroyed, says he is retiring and wants Maverick to run his shop so he can grow and stay a good friend in Garden Heights. Kenya and Star meet up again. Star considers the countless victims of police violence and vows to never stop advocating for racial equality and justice. About the author. Angie Thomas was born in the Mississippi city of Jackson. She started writing The Hate You Give as her final project at Belhaven University, a mostly white school in her hometown where she studied creative writing. Thomas has said that her early work was mostly romance, but that a professor's support led her to write more about her life as a black woman in the south of the United States. She also chose to make the main character of her first book a woman because she thought that black girl stories were often left out of popular media and activism. We Need Diverse Books gave its first grant in 2016 to the book Thomas, which hadn't been released yet. When The Hate You Give came out in 2017, it was an instant bestseller and won many awards, including the Coretta Scott King Award. Thomas likes hip-hop and was a rapper for a short time when he was a teen. She has said that Tupac Shakur's work has had a big impact on her, and it was Shakur who gave the word Thug Life its name. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.